And so, you know, I call I call Bitcoin the first quantum asset when you overlay a triple point asset into a time lock. So why do you call Bitcoin a quantum asset? I, I think it has a number of implications, Bitcoin being a quantum asset and sort of the setup to Bitcoin being or any asset having the ability to be a quantum asset. There are a number of things that it needs to have in order to qualify for that. Firstly, it needs to be digital. Secondly, it needs to be digitally scarce or have absolute scarcity. It needs to have the ability to be seizure resistant and censorship resistant. It also needs to come with an immutable ledger supply and issuance. So you can't basically fuck around with any of it. And ironically, you know, they're all the technological innovations that fundamentally led to Bitcoin and Bitcoin being the first triple point asset. And so, you know, I call I call Bitcoin the first quantum asset when you overlay a triple point asset into a time lock. So in order to have a quantum asset, you need to have a triple point asset that serves the three functions of money. And you need to be able to time lock that basically into the future. So if you think of conceptually how time locking works, you know, with a Bitcoin, you've got it in a wallet here, you send it to the future here, and it's suspended in a quantum state, basically a superposition where it's neither here nor there. It's effectively Schrodinger's Bitcoin. You know, it's not in either places, but it's at both places at the same time. So depending on where you're looking at it is where it's going to be. And and this is why I think it's basically a quantum asset on many, many fronts. And so when you think about that and the fact that there's only half a percent adoption, so really from a monetary perspective, this thing can only get bigger because you can't destroy it and you can't alter it. All of a sudden, this is effectively a time-proof asset. And that's why it's a quantum asset.